This is the last smart home sensor you will ever need. It's called the Multisensor 7 by Aotech and it features seven different readings. No, no, six. Sorry? Six. Why is it called the Multisensor 7? I don't know, you tell me. Still, without a doubt, this has to be the ruler of all smart home sensors. One sensor to rule them all, one sensor to find them, one sensor to bring them all, and in the darkness bind them. Honestly, it's a truly incredible smart home sensor because it can detect motion, vibration, read the temperature, check the humidity, tell you the light level, and even give you a UV reading. Now, I've been challenged yet again by Brian from Automate Your Life to save energy using Aotech Kit for the hashtag energy challenge with the guys over at IFTTT, of course. And by saving energy, hopefully, I'll save a few of the finest king's pounds. Now, after this video, you can go and take a look at the IFTTT Energy Challenge website to see some of the most amazing creators in the smart home community, show you some fantastic ways that you can use your smart home kit to save energy and money. And I'll show you how I've done that with the Multisensor 7 shortly. But I wanted to say how impressed I've been with my precious. Now that's largely because not only has it six sensors built into a body that isn't much bigger than a camera battery, it has the ability to be powered either by battery or by USB. And that's a super rare occurrence to have that ability in a smart home sensor of this size. I've come across no other smart home sensor quite like it. And the thing is, most of Aotech's kit is like this. Take their door and window sensor 7, for example, which comes with the ability to detect not just open and close, but also if installed on a window, it can detect tilt. Take a look at the Siren 2, which has a built-in backup battery and a thousand lumen alert light. Take a look at this. Jesus Christ! Even the Aotech smart button, something that typically only performs a single function, being a button, actually has a temperature sensor in it. Most of their kit has something extra as a tiny little sweetener. And in effect, this means that you need less kit in the same area than if you used other smart home systems. But it's all very well and good having a spec sheet as long as my legs and being six foot eight, that's quite long. The question is, do these specs actually hold up to scrutiny? How well do the AirTech sensors perform? Taking a look at the detection history, it's quite clear that the temperature is working very, very well, as is the humidity sensors. Both of these readings seem to match that from other devices. But what about motion? How quickly will it detect movement when I start to move? Oh, right. Well, apparently that fast. Okay, so the motion detection works, but what about tamper detection? This uses the built-in vibration sensor, which is supposedly able to detect tampering when the device has moved, for example. But according to Aotech, it can be used to detect seismic activity within the house. Just how sensitive this is to vibrations, we unfortunately won't know, though, because the only data we can pull from this device using smart things is if it's been triggered or not. But we can always try and find out what the minimum disturbance it needs to be a trigger. Will this activate by just jumping? It did! I don't know if you saw the blue light then, and it's come up in here. Look at that! The only thing I haven't been able to test is the UV index, and that's because it's the dead of winter here, and the UV index sits at zero for nearly six months of the year. But it's safe to conclude that from my completely scientific tests that this device lives up to its specs. And I'm going to be honest here, and say that it's actually blown my expectations out of the park. I kind of thought it wouldn't perform well, given that it's got so much packaged into something so small, but I was wrong. Very wrong. No, we weren't. Yes, we definitely were. In fact, I was so wrong in this assumption, and I've been so impressed with this sensor, that I've decided to build it into a few of my smart home automations to perform certain tasks that only this sensor can achieve by itself. 
And these automations are going to save me a ton of money in energy costs. The first is that if no movement is detected for an hour in my living room and the temperature falls below a set figure, it will trigger an automation to shut my curtains using the SwitchBot curtain device, even if it's daylight outside. Now, this might seem odd, but one of the biggest areas of heat loss around the house are your windows. So knowing that there's no occupancy in that room, it can shut it down to slow the heat loss from that room and save me money on my energy. Now I've set up another automation related to heat as well, so that when the sun hits that room directly, which is usually in the afternoon, it can heat up very, very quickly. So when the light sensor senses a massive increase of light during daytime hours, and the temperature then exceeds 20 degrees, it will automatically turn off all of my radiators within the room that are connected to Acara radiator valves. Again, saving me money using less oil to heat the central heating system. Now those two automations are perhaps quite niche, but they do save me a ton of energy. And realistically, this is the only device that I know that can do these things without the need of further sensors, especially in this size. And really, I'm only scratching the surface of what these things can do. Now I'm running these through automations in the SmartThings app using the Airtech Smart Home Hub as the SmartThings Hub, which has worked flawlessly. But these can be made to work with pretty much any smart home system through SmartThings integration, Z-Wave, Zigbee, and even Matter. Now the thing is, I've genuinely not got a bad thing to say about this sensor, which is a very, very rare occurrence indeed, because I often go looking for the worst. Perhaps the only thing I could say is that it's quite initial outlay of cost. The price of the Multisensor 7 is currently around 60 to 70 pounds, which does seem expensive. No, it doesn't. But my precious, it really does. No, it doesn't. Not listening. Given that this is an all-in-one, it's actually a massively competitive device. If you add up the cost of all the separate sensors to make up this one, it'll likely be a total that is far higher than the price of the Multisensor 7. And if you wanted multiple sensors in one room, this could very well be the most cost-effective solution for you. And to be honest, probably one of the best too. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. I'm trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And every subscriber really helps. And if you're already a subscriber, make sure you hit that thumbs up button for me. Other than that, guys, I will see you back for another episode of Stu's Reviews soon. What are you doing? I've got to put it away. I'll give it back. No. It's my precious. <laughs>